This conference will now be recorded. All right, so I guess I'm just going to start by introducing our coffee that we got today. Um, we have our guests, Jess, Angie, Angelica. Welcome from CPD. Um, do you guys want to give a quick little little spiel about what you guys are doing right now? Angelica, do you want to take this? No. <laughs> so humble. <laughs> um, I'm going to make you talk later about what you're working on with okay. regards to handshakes. So prepare yourself. All right. Ready. So we're still hard at work um, doing all career readiness activities. We're still providing resume reviews for um, students digitally. We can set up a webinar and do it sort of like this. Um, Students are emailing resumes and we can just do an email revision with track changes and comments on the side. Um, most, I've done a lot of strong interest inventories, which are an assessment that can give you some insight on values and interest and different job fields that could be a good fit for you based off of your interests. Um, we're still doing, we're trying to partner with as many employers and community members to get jobs and resources. We're gonna try to partner with different employers to start just pushing out information about marketable skills and what you can be doing to prepare while you're in isolation. So we're still hard at work, all of our team, Jessica, Angelica, Menza, and Brandy, who are not on the clock right now, but we're all working and we're, um, excited to continue to provide services and looking forward to assisting students in any way. Cool. We, we love career and professional development. They actually helped me make my resume so I could get this job as a blue coat. So. Same. They helped me too. <laughs> um, Saviana so, too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Connection. Um, so I think I saw the other day, are you guys doing an online career fair? That's a great question. Um, we're looking into online uh, career fairs right now. Um, Menza, who's our GA, has identified a number of opportunities that um, colleagues across the country are starting to host that are open to the public. And so we're starting to post out the things that we're identifying as opportunities for our students and community members to participate in. We're looking into hosting um, virtual career fairs. We've already hosted two big career fairs this semester. Um, so we aren't looking to do one this semester, um, but we are looking to do an on-campus employment fair um, at the end of the semester to help our on-campus partners um, find their student staff for the fall. And so that one will likely be online. Um, so we'll be posting out um, virtual opportunities uh, that other folks are putting out there that are open to the public, and then we're looking into how we can um, do our on-campus employment fair at the end of the semester virtually. Cool. Um, so do you guys have any advice for people who are being like temporarily laid off? Yeah, that's um, an unfortunate situation that a lot of Americans are finding themselves in right now. And so um, I think the best thing that you can be doing is taking the time to, while you are laid off, um, to really develop your career portfolio. So um, investing time in refining and um, fluffing your resume, uh, making it as meaty and informational, impactful as you can. Also, there are a lot of resources to do some personal development. So if there's a skill that you've always wanted to work on, or this might be a great opportunity for people to um, trailblaze into a new field, there's lots of opportunities to do some online growth and professional development and learn a new skill 
It's also potentially a good opportunity for people to work on certifications uh, within their career field that can really set them apart after uh, the coronavirus is controlled and then the economy starts to go and, and employers are hiring. So there'll be a large pool of individuals looking for jobs. And so it's gonna be, for a little bit, it may be a very competitive market. And so anything you can do to set yourself apart in terms of training or certifications to put on your resume um, would be very beneficial. There's also some research coming out of um, some places like NACE and Career Builder. Sorry, guys. And uh, what they're finding is a lot of our a lot of service workers are looking for employment right now. So um, folks that are in food industry, that are in hospitality, um, folks that do um, delivery, that kind of stuff. Um, those are the folks that are most impacted by the shelter in place. Um, and so this all of those options that Angie listed out, like getting certifications, doing some research into the market, um, building your resume. Um, and finding ways to uh, fit into the new virtual world right now and then also be prepared for when the economy comes back or bounces back um, and businesses are hiring again. Um, so keeping in mind, you know, um, the value of service workers, we don't want to devalue that, but also find ways to um, create opportunities for those folks to find employment. Um, and a lot of that's just going to come with skill building. Cool. I also, think, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Also, was gonna just join in on that and say that it might be a really good opportunity if you are currently unemployed or looking or just recently laid off to contact some companies that maybe your dream company or might be a company that you've been applying for that it hasn't worked out and ask if there's anything you can do to volunteer. That mm -hmm. way, you can not have a blank spot on your resume right now. If you can do some volunteering right now. Obviously the healthcare industry might could use some help with, um, I don't know, connecting with people. I'm not sure um, what, you know, cause the hip, HIPAA and stuff, but there's a lot of opportunities for you to get in and start, um, yeah, building your, continuing to build your resume through volunteerism. And Garrett, you wanna talk about what you just posted too? Yeah, um, I mean, there's not. I don't really have much to add other than what I just posted. But uh, <laughs> if if you're looking for extra work part time, just for the short term, HEB is hiring a lot of people to kind of manage their fast flow of extra inventory that they're putting in and uh, a lot of extra online orders. So they're needing more people to go through the stores and pick up those curbside delivery orders. So I know I know there's a lot of people, students of mine at former schools that I worked at before, have been posting a lot of pictures that they've all gotten jobs there. And so something I kind of recommend, but don't leave us for HEB if you're uh, if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, just a side gig, guys. <laughs> same thing with Walmart. I saw I saw um, Walmart is actively recruiting as well, and it might be a good short term. So is um like Grubhub and DoorDash. They're doing like contactless delivery. So even if you like don't want to go to HEB or Walmart because you don't want to be in contact with other people at, at this time, which is understandable, you can always do that for a couple of weeks or however long this lasts too um and just know that you want to do curbside drop-offs only and you make a few extra bucks with that because i know for christian and i since a lot of like doordash grub have all these places they're not doing um you don't have to pay for delivery anymore and so we've been tipping more um so that's a good way to to get some extra cash too during this time does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, let's make uh, actually, I have a comment. I was gonna, I was gonna ask, like, if I, if I want to make a federal resume, like, how do I do that? That that's a great question. Federal resumes are very specific, and um, it's a niche resume, and it's not at all similar to a civilian resume. It is very time intensive to build a federal resume and there's a lot of very particular data that they want on the resume. This would be a great time to start building it. If you have a little bit of extra time while you're not going out or going out to eat or going to a movie or whatever, 
Um, because federal resumes are not going to be your typical one page bulleted resume. They're going to be more all inclusive on everything that you've done. So if you are interested in building a federal resume, set up an appointment and we can start to kind of walk through that process with you. Are you still doing the virtual mock interviews? Yes, mm -hmm. I actually had, I've done one virtually and I've done one via phone call. And I, um, that, in, that student that I worked with actually got hired. Oh, nice. Wow. We had a success story. <laughs> cool. So how do you account on your resume this time? Let's say you had to get let go from your job or you were furloughed. Um, how, how do you put that in your resume? Uh, that, that's a great question. And there's a few ways that you can try to combat this break in your resume. Um, one of them, I think that it will be pretty well known that this was an odd time. And so if you were furloughed and you put the end date March 2020 for the end of that job, I don't think that that will look, um, that employers will look down or negatively on that because I think everybody is understanding, but there are options of resumes to not include dates. Uh, you can write a functional resume or a combination resume, um, which gives you the opportunity to create a resume specific to different jobs. So if you're gonna do a functional resume, highlighting customer service or highlighting logistics, highlighting management, you have the ability to do that and you can kind of not include dates. The other thing is like I mentioned earlier was including volunteer work or some virtual work that you're doing right now. Actually, I'm gonna throw it to Angelica because she had some information on vol virtual volunteer work. Uh, yeah, you guys can get some virtual volunteer work on pointsoflight.org. And they have a lot of virtual volunteer work that you can do anything from web designing to graphic design, healthcare, marketing, uh, the list goes on. There was a lot of volunteer work there. So check it out at pointsoflight.org. Tweet. I think what you guys do is really great because um, a lot of people struggle with unemployment and just even having like the option of being able to come to you guys for advice is already in its own very encouraging. Thank you. Um, I, know, I know you guys mentioned the, um, the walk-in hours. How do people access that and how like what are the hours for that? Yeah, we're hosting virtual drop-in hours. And so these are meant to be informal drop-ins to come and ask a quick question or to schedule a more formal appointment with one of our staff members. We're hosting them like this with a go-to meeting. Um, it is out on all of our social feeds. It is also linked on our website. Um, and if you wanna make me the presenter, I can share um, our homepage with you and show you how you can access that. Um, we are doing these drop-in hours currently Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. There will be a staff member, thank you. Um, there will be a staff member um, sitting and waiting um, for anybody to check in. Uh, yesterday was our first virtual check-in um, or drop-in time and we, had, um, we did have a visitor, so that was really nice. Um, and we're hoping to have more folks drop in. Um, the way that they would if we were in the office, you know, hey, I'm walking down the hallway. Oh, I have a question for CBD. Let me go and ask them this quick question or stop by and make an appointment. So we're trying to kind of recreate that environment virtually, let people know that we're still here for them. And so this is our homepage. Um, you just want to go to the um, tamuct.edu uh, and then you can do forward slash CPD and it will take you to us. You can also find us by going to student life. Um, this is going to show you all of our student affairs offices and um, we're going to be right here. Just visit the career and professional development page and I'll take you right back to our homepage. Um, we have added a banner to the top um, that gives you some information on how to contact us. Our phone number is still um, functioning. You can still call our office phone number and reach us. Um, you can always email us at cpd at tamuct.edu um, or you could just click on this join us link. I'm not going to do it right now because we're in a go-to meeting. 
Um, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., you can click on this link and immediately be connected with one of us. Cool. Um, I know it, it, with it being um, virtual, um, everybody being virtu virtual, and it would be um, maybe easier to schedule an appointment with y'all, um, given the fact that some professors have pushback due dates or um, whatever the case is, how long can I expect to, or any student expect to be in an appointment? And do you want to take that one or Angelica? Angelica, go, you, you take this one. Wow. <laughs> okay. When a student makes an appointment, uh, depends on, I guess, when they schedule that date and time. And I guess that's when they'll get the appointment. Am I wrong, Angie or Jessica? I'm not really sure how to go about this. So students can, we uh, will schedule appointments with available staff around the student's schedule. So um, if you've got class 11 to 1 and you want to meet with somebody at 1.30, um, we can try to accommodate that as long as we have staff. Uh, most of the time we do. Uh, so that's not going to be a big challenge. Actual appointment times, um, we schedule for an hour. Um, our appointment blocks. Some appointments do take longer, like the strong interest inventory with ENG. Um, I think she blocks off an hour and a half uh, for the interpretation um, because that's pretty in depth. But um, the thing about our services is that it's never just like a one and done kind of situation, right? Um, when you're j job searching or if you're thinking about your post graduation plans, that's a bigger conversation than just how do I um, list out this one job on my resume or how do I write a cover letter? It's all of those pieces that make up a picture. So we'll schedule additional appointments with folks. Sometimes we'll give you some uh, some work to do um, and make some suggestions on what you can do and then come back and review that um, with us. And we offer a lot of different services. So for somebody that's going through a, a a basic career track they might be thinking i don't know how to look for a job so we're going to do some career coaching with you and career exploration um okay you're ready to uh apply for your job so now you need a resume you need a cover letter you need to learn about references how do those work and so those are additional appointment types and then you got the interview and now you're like really nervous and you just want to practice with someone so you can come and do a mock interview with us um maybe you need something to wear after the pandemic um, you can come and access our career closet and borrow something um, so that you look your best. So it's never a one and done. We offer a lot of different services. Most of our appointments um, we schedule for an hour. They don't all take an hour and some of them may take longer. Yeah, my goal, any, and I know Angelica and Menza and uh, Brandy, whenever we meet with students, is to really meet them where they're at. And we can be flexible and meet for the full hour. Sometimes we know that may not happen maybe it's only a 30 minute and you know it we can really do whatever is necessary and with that student how about handshake you guys still working with handshake yeah yeah, yeah. so students can drop in during our drop-in hours carla and schedule an appointment with us they can also still self-schedule appointments with us through handshake um, so if you have not claimed your Handshake account, go and claim it as students, a Handshake account has already been created for you. All the hard work is done. You just need to go to my CT, um, search for Handshake, click on the tile, and then log. when you log in for the first time, it'll ask you to create a password and then ask you some general information questions about industries that you're interested in so it can populate jobs for you. We have uh, 6,000 employers connected with us in Handshake, and so there are a lot of jobs, a lot of part-time, full-time, and internship opportunities in there. Um, also, all of our on-campus um, employers are posting jobs in Handshake. Um, and then you can also find our events, um, like our career fairs and our virtual events that are coming up, um, and register for those and get more information um, and self-schedule appointments based on your availability. And Angelica, do you want to talk about your Handshake workshop? that you all are putting together? Uh, yes, sorry, I unmuted myself. Uh, Brandy and I are working on a handshake tutorial project. 
And so we're gonna be showing students, staff, faculty, how to pretty much use Handshake. You can see how to upload your resume, apply for jobs, uh, see employers and reviews, look at your applications, and even apply for volunteer and internships, full-time and part-time, everything. We're gonna show you the ins and outs of Handshake. Yeah, I wish I had that whenever I first logged in a handshake because I was figuring everything out myself. I didn't know that I could come to CPD for that. So, uh, and I actually didn't even know how to make an appointment with CPD. So I came into the office before I was in Blue and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to go, please help. And I don't even know who ended up telling me how to make an appointment because I don't think I've ever seen this guy again, but he was in the office. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. You're making a tutorial for it. Thank you, thank you. We look forward to helping all of our students and making sure they know how to set up appointments as well as uh, even applying for jobs too. So go handshake. <laughs> or elbow bump. I was just about to say that. No, <laughs> Anybody else have any questions for CPD? Yes, I was going to ask, like, okay, so if I'm going to an interview, like, am I wearing, like, a two-piece suit, a three-piece suit, or, like, a, a double-breasted suit? And also, like, what, what, what color should the suit be, and what kind of shoes should go with the suit? That is specific. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love that your <laughs> question is uh, stylistic, too. <laughs> And um, my, yeah, Krishan is definitely the best dresser in the office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Probably the best dressed on campus. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I think my advice is that you're supposed to dress one step up from the organization that you're applying for. So if the organization, if they would typically dress like, let's say, in a polo with khakis. So you would do one step up. Um, and usually a two-piece suit with a button-down shirt and tie is going to be classic and simple. That would be my suggestion. Also, you're going to want to keep the color palette neutral in color. So we're thinking grays and browns. Um, black is always acceptable, but somewhere in a more neutral um, palette. Navy blues are um, okay. You don't want to try to, unless you're applying for like Vogue magazine or um, a company where it revolves around fashion, I would suggest to keep it um, much cl more classic. And so you're not trying to make a fashion statement. What you want to sell is the skills that you have for that employer, not your style. As far as the scale. <laughs> never know what you're wearing to be a distraction. All right, Jess, you can talk about the shoes now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, you want to keep them classic as well. Um, I know that you love your patent shiny shoes and they're amazing, but you might want to, um, for an interview, um, take it back to a more classic um, look. You could always do fun socks so that when you're sitting and you cross your legs, you got a little pop of fun um, there. You can always do that. Um, you can always do an interesting tie um, for the gentleman. Not too interesting, a, a small yeah. amount of interest. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I wouldn't do like um, your Looney Tunes tie or something like that. But you could do something that you know um, kind of reflects a little bit about who you are, but tastefully. Um, <laughs> I like to imagine for Sean and like. In like a suit with like coattails and like a giant cane with like a little snow globe on the end. <laughs> I'm a real wizard. You're a wizard. <laughs> and a a cane. Cane. You know he needs his cane. <laughs> oh, hell dapper. Something else to note about um, when you're dressing for an interview, ladies, um, you want to keep your makeup um, a little bit more classic as well. You don't want to do like uh you know the blue eyeshadow and the red lip or something like that you want to kind of um 
I'm a big fan of the red lip too, person. I love it too. But you want to kind of take it back a notch um, and just be a little bit more classic. You want to be mindful of like your nail color and length um, and watch the bobbles. You don't want to have too many accessories um, or anything that can be a distraction to you or the interviewer um, while you're meeting with them. Cool. I've always wanted like the pop up color bag, like a nice, you know, red <laughs> bag. Pair? Do you suggest wearing it back or just like that's always been like my biggest question when going to an interview? You know, mm -hmm. do you pull it up or do you just like let it flow? What do you think? I think in this, as long as it's classic and tasteful, whatever makes you feel most confident is how mm -hmm. I would wear your hair. Yeah. Um, you don't want it to be like in your eyes or where they can't see, make eye co good eye contact with you. You don't want it to be distracting you in any way. But I would definitely, when I go into an interview, I fix my hair in a way that makes me feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. I try. Yeah. You don't want to always be touching it either. Like you don't want to be in an interview. And so like if you're like, I'm touching my hair a lot right now because I don't typically wear it down. And so it keeps going into my face and I'm having to move. That would be distracting for my interviewer. So for an interview, if I'm wearing my hair down, I would pin my bang back so that it doesn't continue to fall into my face. Um, so just kind of keep those kind of things in mind when you're getting ready. And if you're still unsure, um, you can always do a dress rehearsal with us um, and we can help you out. Cool. That's kind of wholesome. I imagine like, like a like a montage in like a two thousands like girl movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what about this? And then off camera, what about this? And then they come <laughs> out, and then everyone's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the one. Do really do that if that's what would make you really comfortable with a virtual uh, dress rehearsal, we could do that. <laughs> Kaneta was saying in the chat that the bookstore has a, a tie that would be good for the alumni. I wonder, does the bookstore have an online store? I know y'all probably don't. I mean, maybe Gary knows. I they don't, do. but that's a great question. And I think if they don't, now would be the ideal time for them to have that. They do have online shopping. Yes, they do, actually. They do. You can order yes. online. Mm -hmm. I am going to have to, I can get back with you guys on that one, actually, because um, Jackie, I think, is trying to continue to fulfill online orders for anything that you guys might need in the bookstore. So, um, actually, what I can do, Carla, is see if she might be able to come and talk to you at one of the Blue Coat um, virtual meetings, if you'd like. I can get you back in contact. That would be great. Yes, yep. please. Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah. I um so my teacher for like research method chemistry, Dr. Fan, she had this like amazing like Texas AM University Central Texas like jersey. Like it was like this football jersey, but it was like the the sleeves were like down like that. And then on the back, it's a T A M E C T like in big letters, like over the sleeves too. And I was like, whoa, that's like the single best piece of merch for the school that I've seen. I was like, <laughs> when did you get it? And she was like, three years ago. And I was like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite one is this. It was like AM Central Texas, the pride of the South. And it had like the entire Southern United States in this like rustic cowboy looking shirt. And I'm like, Welcome to Cavenders. And uh, Amy Taggart was wearing it. And I asked her, I was like, where did you get that? She's like, dude, this was forever ago. I was like, man, it made it look like we were the top university in the that Southern. That would really be yeah. so fun to wear. I we are the top university, Garrett. What? We are the top university. I can't hear you. I said we are the top university. There you go. That's right. She is spitting facts. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little biased towards another A&M, but I won't throw that out there. <laughs> someone mute me. Someone need mute Garrett real quick. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wait, I'm ignoring it. 
Yeah, you'll have to mute me to hashtag giggum. <laughs> Everyone, let's make Jessica laugh. I want to hear it again. I miss it. <laughs> I miss you guys so much. Um, no. I Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm really loving working at home. I'm an introvert by nature. And so this is like the best. Um, but I miss when I, I miss taking breaks and hearing um, laughter throughout the office and going out and seeing what's going on and checking in with everyone and seeing how you are. Um, so it's really lovely to see you guys. Aww, oh, Very sweet. <laughs> yeah, I do love singing at karaoke in the office with the blue coats and annoying Garrett to the point where he has to slam his door. He's like, I'm gonna bring it here. Somebody knocks on my home door, it's over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll like all stand outside his window six feet apart, going like, hey, now I'm an all star. <laughs> I want the old man. Get off my lawn! I'm gone. The cops. Oh my gosh! Hilarious. I'm a. I like to call myself like an introvert, extrovert. You know what I mean? Like I, I love being very like out there and with people, but I also love my like replenishment time. So now I've had plenty of replenishment time for that. I feel like my introverted side of my personality is like in this box. She's just begging to get out and there's nobody to really get it out to other than my husband and my dogs. And I feel like at this point I'm driving them both crazy, a little stir crazy mm -hmm. because my introverted self is just, my extroverted self is just like, let me out. Yeah, I understand that. Literally yesterday, like I was in my car and I drove literally nowhere for three hours. Like I drove like basically in circles because I did not want to be in my room. Like I just drove with no purpose, no aim. I went like, I went like down random roads. I found myself behind the Dog Ridge water tower and I was like, wow, I've never been behind the Dog Ridge water tower. <laughs> and then I went like the other direction and then like I found myself at, at Ridgewood. Yeah. Have you guys driven to campus? I hear there's lots of blue bonnets. I know I there are. are. I've been meaning there I'm going to take my kids out there sometime because I got to get a kid pick in the blue bonnets. Not, COVID's not going to stop that. No. Yeah, I can't risk it. I don't. <laughs> I had to go out and rent an errand today, and there are so many people at the bank. It makes me oh crazy. I can't risk it. Yeah, there were a lot of people break. at the bank. Holy Did smokes! The parking lot was packed. I was <gasps> shocked. I was shocked. Wow. So we had a it's gonna like cough. Go like. Listen, that's what happens when it's like one of three places that's still open and operating. You got to get out of the house and go to the bank these days. Or you could go to the emergency room. Um, we had a very successful trip to the emergency room last night. It was deserted, guys. Like, my husband kept them um, cooking, and we had to go for stitches. And I was like, oh, man, this is going to be scary. This is going to be rough. Like, there's going to be face masks and hazmat suits and, like, there's going to be a lot of people. I'm not going to want to be around any of them. I'm going to have to stand outside and wait. Well, he just, he just like, uh, was just like, oh, this is going to be awful. And so we get there. Um, the parking lot is like, I mean, there's cars because the healthcare workers, hashtag support healthcare workers. Um, thank you to them for still being here. But um, we walked in. The whole waiting room was deserted. There was like only a couple nurses hanging around. Um, not there were only a couple of folks that were wearing face masks. There were no hazmat suits. Um, we were not disinfected as we walked through the door. <laughs> we didn't have to get around anybody. We didn't have to touch anything. We were in and out um, for an emergency room visit. We were um, round trip probably an hour and forty five minutes. Oh wow! Which is um, sure. Yeah, it was pretty pretty incredible. I thought it was going to be a lot more. <laughs> Uh, Lianca asked a question in the chat about the testing center. I think it's closed. Um, all the campuses, all everything on campus except for 
the um, computer lab, and that's it. Everything else is mm -hmm. closed up for the semester, I believe. Does anybody um, know? I was going to say, we could, um, we can reach out to uh, Lauren Hines. She is the um, amazing senior admin over in Student Success and Access and Inclusion. And so the testing center is a part of their suite. And so she will have the inside beat on um, testing center and if there are any workarounds. And so um, I'm happy to reach out to her and then maybe Carla, I can share that information with you and we can get it out um, on social, we'll maybe attach it to the description and YouTube for the video. Sure, that would be great, thank you. That'd be perfect because I was gonna ask that, I was like, so what about the students then who need that extra support uh, when it comes to testing? Because we still have tests going on. They, they might have changed the format a little bit, but it still have tests. Yeah. Um, so is everybody, as far as like the, the blue coats, I know a lot of the things that we've done have really shifted. What do you guys think so far about, because um, we had our first virtual coffee last week. Um, is everybody able to like access our YouTube and stuff okay? Like our Instagram posts, um, like popping up on your feed. That's another thing that I was worried about since we weren't like active for so long, especially on Instagram but our post kind of fading into the background. Um, and do you guys have any recommendations for what y'all want to see in the, in the future from us? I wasn't aware of the YouTube page. Um, have you shared that in the student email? Um, Carla, I think it's a question for you. I, we have not shared it in a student email, but we will, I will send those out to Mark Bean so they can, um, cause we don't even have a YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a blue coat page on the website. So I'm working with marketing to see if we can get all those links up there. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm getting everything on engage. So I'm going to share those links on engage as well. Okay. Yeah. I'll see maybe Paul can send out like one of those massive, you know, across campus type. Right. Um, and I didn't see the uh, email about today's blue, uh, Coffee the Blue Coats go out to students. Um, so I would just recommend maybe sending that out again every okay. Tuesday, just because yeah. I had to go look for the link. Um, okay. Are you using the same meeting room every time, Carla? Yes, ma'am. Every time I made it open. Um, so that way, if people just click on some of our old links, or well, not old, but, you know, <laughs> they can continue onward. But yeah, thank you for that, Michelle. Um, I will definitely get those out no there. That way it just creates the the um, the buzz, you know? And then you guys are gonna be part on the 14th. So I'm trying to get like a, a schedule of all the different organizations. So yeah. if anybody here is interested in joining, I know Campus Rep, we haven't invited y'all yet, but if you guys are interested in joining, um, you know, kind of tell us what's going on with your stuff, so. You guys are always on, so we appreciate that. Thank you for the support, everybody. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Yeah, um, on our YouTube, I want to mention, so we post our, our, our copy of the Blue Coats. We only have one up so far. Um, we also posted our first P20 on, <clears throat> on YouTube the other night. It's like financial aid at college. Um, and also, last week, we did a cooking with the Blue Coats, and I did how to do with three ingredient fudge, which turned out pretty good, especially since um, groceries are kind of crazy right now like these are still really easy to find to make something like simple and sweet um and i think those are the only ones that we have posted so far but we look forward to like posting more stuff in the future that way more than just our students like future students who are looking into our university if they, if they find that page they're able to see what we're really about um so yeah and they're always there for you to look back at And then we're going to record every session of Coffee with Coats and post it up there too. So for yeah. reference, we'll put it on Facebook as well. Um, Scribble IO went really well last week. Oh yeah. So um, so we all basically like came up with our own project for um, every day of the week. So all of us Blue Coats had like our own little thing to do. And I picked like 
fun Friday, so I I did like a like a free game that we could all play together. Um, and we had a bunch of people from Campus Rec join us. It was actually really cool. Um, I thought we were only gonna play like one full round, but everyone was like another round, so we ended up playing <laughs> for like a whole hour. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. You guys want to run through the program? I wish I recorded it. What yeah. you have going on mm -hmm. every day? You guys want to run through programming real quick? Let everybody know what we're doing, starting with Motivation Monday and Krishan Monday. <laughs> Yo, I got to jump off, but keep up the good work. This is great. Thanks, CPD. Bye, Garrett. Bye, Garrett. How do Garrett. I kick off? Uh, so, oh, well done. <laughs> there you go. So I did my first uh, motivational Monday. I posted it to our IGTV on Instagram, um, and you're able to look up that up on one of our posts. It's our latest post, and then I also posted it on our on our Facebook page. So motivational Monday was kind of something that I came up with on the on the fly. I'm really sappy when it comes to like I have Pinterest boards of like motivational quotes and things that uh, kind of help keep me going throughout the week, and. Like I mentioned in my video, almost every day feels like a Monday at this point because it's it's so gloomy, kind of being locked up in our within ourselves. Um, but I just shared my favorite hobby quote, and it's just kind of a I don't know. It was just a quick picker upper, I guess, um, to kind of get feedback from other people. And honestly, I just I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos in general just because I want to hear somebody else talk other than the people in my home or my dogs. So, uh, so yeah, I'm reposting it. They're quick, pretty quick videos. The last one I did was like four minutes long. But they'll probably be around like three to five minutes long each week. Um, so yeah. Thanks, <laughs> John. Your Monday, Monday, Mondays. So um, every Monday I'm gonna I'm gonna be like uh, I mean yesterday I was just talking about like you know like being cheap and. You know, cheapism and stuff like that. Like the philosophy behind being cheap and, and all that cool stuff. And, and then, uh, I mean, like, like I mean, next week I might talk about clothes or like, I, I mean, it just depends. Um, but it's gonna revolve around being cheap, so and, and, and being frugal as well. So I remember, we're talking about that. I remember his meeting was like the only thing I'm not cheap about is clothes because he's yeah. out here looking raggedy, like. It was yeah, so right. good. Can you share with us a little bit of the wisdom that you imparted yesterday uh, for those of us that didn't get to um, pop in and see any of it and it, since it's not recorded? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, I pretty much, uh, I went over, like, like, why I'm cheap and, like, why I don't like to spend money, which is, like, because I kind of feel that, like, like, say, for instance, like, for example, I go out you know, ten dollars a week. I mean, ten dollars an hour, forty hours a week, you get four hundred bucks. Well, I mean, the company's paid you like four hundred bucks because you spent forty hours of your life doing something. So, like, if you go out and spend four hundred bucks on something, then that's like forty hours of your life wasted. So, like, like I'm cheap on like one end, so I can go spend money on like the cool things on the other end. Okay. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I meant to tell you that I really liked what you said. Like that's forty hours of my life just just gone. Mm -hmm. But because it, it, it that resonates with me, but at the same time, I've also heard like if you give somebody ten million dollars, right? But they can't spend it. They don't really have ten million dollars. So what's the what's money worth if you don't spend it? Or do you think there's like a middle ground for both? I mean, I think there's a middle ground. I mean, because I mean, like I said, like when it comes to clothes. You know, or anything like with with cars or like anything I like to do, like I, I'm not cheap because like, I mean like 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 Anna was saying, like I'm not gonna you know be out here looking like like anything. So like, I mean like I have to, I I spend money where like needs to be like, am I gonna go spend money like offerings? I mean I like to buy offerings, but I mean like some things I'll spend money on, some things I won't like. Apple Jacks, I won't buy Apple Jacks, like fruit rings or anything, you know, offering, you know, I'll buy that because, I mean, it's just as good for me, but, like, when it comes to cologne, like, or, like, perfumes or anything like that, toilets or whatever, like, you know, like, I'm not going to go out to the Dollar Tree and buy, like, 
you know, like Hugo Boss, you know, I have to buy you know, the best stuff. Okay, but can we agree that goldfish and whales are vastly different? Yes, I agree. The flavor is very... It it's whales the texture, want powder. I think, for me. What? It's the texture for me. Mm. I, I think, I'm not gonna lie, I think goldfish are better. I love okay. goldfish. Goldfish are the OG, and whales to me are... Like, they just don't compare. Menza's here. Hi, yeah. Menza. All right, so, so we have Mondays. Mondays. We've got Money Mondays. Uh, what else do you guys have going on? So Tuesday, we have coffee. And then Wednesday, me? we have... Where's Amanda? Wednesday is like weekly polls. So the first one I did was asked... Um, how are you feeling today? And I did that um, really because like it was the first time that we had um, started that whole weekly. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and with it being um, quarantine, I I honestly wanted to know how are you feeling. Um, I don't want people to think that they're alone in this, you know, and I wanted to really put out that um, the campus student counseling center is still doing appointments, mm -hmm. and I thought that was a good way to um, put that out there, and um, even, like, even if they just wanted to say, um, hey, you know, like, can I just, like, talk to you about something random, because I'm kind of, my head is, like, not on straight. Um, I put that out there that we're always available to talk about anything. Um, and then piggybacking off of that, this or that Thursday, Kirsten um, came up with it. Um, but it's kind of like it's a fun, a fun way to get your mind off of everything. And it's kind of similar to poll, but it's. It's, it's more would you rather and um based off of whatever the topic is that day and it's a simple way like to get to know our, our students um i created it but i'm kind of handing it off like to amanda um in the future and some of the things that i mentioned before in like one of our other meetings like like she said like making them themed so last week was kind of like general and very like random this or that questions, very like generic, like chocolate or vanilla or TV or movies. Um, but in the future, maybe doing like, like a Disney themed one, like which movie do you prefer over this one? Um, do you, you know, like Disney Plus versus OG, VCR, Disney, you know what I mean? Something like simple like that. And um, like I said, I just expect some boy to get to know like our students and who we have. Um, and I also have to see like who's all involved on our page, uh, on Instagram especially, because it's usually the same people each time answering all of our, our polls and submitting answers to our to our questions. Um, so hopefully we can reach out a little more and get more interaction with our Instagram that way too. How about you, uh, Samantha? What do you have going on on Thursday? Uh, I've been doing at-home scavenger hunts, just like, you know, items around the house, and then uh, the people take pictures of them and comment them, comment them to the Facebook post, and I just thought it was, like, a fun thing to do. Uh, the winner last week got her uh, kid involved, and she said that they had a lot of fun doing it, so I want to continue doing it. And you get a uh, whoever wins DoorDash or Grubhub credit, so. A gift card. Yeah. A little inside of you know. And then Friday. Very needed during this time. Then cooking with, well, what is it? Fridays, is it going to always be cooking with Kristen or is it just going to change whichever blue coat uh, takes over? Well, I hope, I wanted it to be like a, like a rotation. I just kind of, since I came up with the idea, I decided to go ahead and just make mine the first one. Um, I know Amanda said that she's going to take it over for, for this Friday. Do you have any idea what you're going to make yet, Amanda? I don't. I 
I thought about my um you know, I don't want to seem like big headed, but my my homemade, not homemade, my famous ramen noodles. But I <laughs> You should do it. You should show us how to soft boil an egg. Okay, honestly, I'll do it because I really want to show y'all. <laughs> you put green onions in it? Wait, don't tell us. Okay. Yeah, don't tell us. <laughs> Make people tune walk. in. That actually sounds really amazing, Amanda. I have never made ramen before. Um, and I would really love to know how. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Like, do I need to perch up? <laughs> or is she like, hey? Hey. <laughs> and then, how about you, Miss Hannah Banana? Um, mine is Friday. We kind of discussed it a little bit already, but we basically do, like, free games to get students involved. Like, make sure you're having fun, like, at least a little bit. So, um... <laughs> Last week we did Scribble.io, which is like a game you can play online for free. Um, and it was really cool because like, um, it's basically, it works like Pictionary and you get like a word to draw, you can draw it, but everyone has to guess what you're drawing. And then it goes like in a rotation. And it's actually really fun because I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's just really fun, but we're, thinking about like rotating the games out every so often because um, my friend Jessica, the vice president of science club, she is proposing that she'll share her game of Jackbox with us, which is another game that you can play online with your friends because she has the, the game on Steam. So I'm excited to see where it all goes because we have a lot of options and we got really good turnout last time, so. Well, we were able to use um, Discord too from Campus Rec, so we're all like, talking to each other as we're like doing this like charade thing. And honestly, it was kind of hard to tell who was who when they were talking, but we were all just kind of talking with each other, and it was it was it was really fun. It it was literally like playing charades with a bunch of people. Um, like in like in person, since we were able to use Discord, so that was pretty cool. It was honestly really fun. Yeah, it's like. We were all just like playing with our friends, basically. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to join us next week for that? It was so fun. How many How many people could play at one time? Uh, Scribble IO specifically fits about like twelve people at a time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much the cap for Jackbox is, but. I also know, like, if we got more than 12 people at a time, we could definitely shift out and have shorter rounds. Well, I want to thank CPD for being here. You guys are awesome. Thank you for what you're doing and for joining us. Um, thank is there you. any last minute, last word you'd like to share with us? I hear you. <laughs> Thanks for letting us join y'all. This was so fun. I love what y'all are doing. You're hard at work, still engaging our student population. So keep up the good work. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Thank you. And it, was so it was so Thank good. You. Virtual drop in hours. Um, if you need any help, drop in. Your blue coat. <laughs> we love having folks. So thank you everybody for being here and for supporting us. And anytime you need anything, just text us, email us, um, Instagram us, whatever. These guys are amazing and they're great at keeping spirits up. So. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs> They're dropping off like flies. Really <laughs> hard. I can't find a hang up button. Uh, <laughs> hold on, I'm I'm saving the recording. I'm also gonna put it in the cloud. Oh, so. Who will be the last man standing? <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Miss Bye, you. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.